is right! Stupid <laughs> reptiles! Welcome to another Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Van Gorder. More than half of us had our eyes glued to the television on weekends as a staple. That was the gnarly influence for sewer-dwelling, pizza-loving Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had on children worldwide. These heroes in a half shell have carved their way into becoming radical pop culture icons, amassing a shell-shocking cult following. And when it comes to the villains they have faced, none are quite as brainy and impressionable as Krang. That extremely nasty tiny pink brain with tentacles plopped inside a hulking android body like a turtle in a half-shell taco was truly unlike any other antagonist we had ever seen. With his interdimensional origins, wicked intellect, and a touch of humor, Krang has become a beloved character among the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles enthusiasts. So cowabunga, dude! Buckle up your shell and grab your pizza. We are going deep diving into Krang's complex anatomy. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Crane's character is based on an alien race. Now, this character is originally based on an alien race from a classic TMNT comic published by Laird and Eastman under Mirage Studios. He was first featured in the 1987 television series as a primary antagonist who ruled Dimension X as a powerful warlord and dictator, leading brutal campaigns with his loyal subordinate, General Trag, and an army of rock soldiers. But then came that fateful day when an unexplained incident left Krang stripped of his reptilian body, transforming him into a weird brain-like entity, resembling much like an Utrom, who were a species of peace-loving aliens with tiny tentacles and a brain-like body. These creatures ironically found themselves stranded on Earth and adopted the guise of a front company called TCRI, Techno Cosmic Research Institute. It was also the Utroms who were responsible for the canister, containing the mutagen that caused the turtles to mutate. Reeling back to Krang's history, he was banished from Dimension X to Earth and found himself in a rather tight spot. However, fate had a twist in store for him when the Technodrome, his operative fortress, fell into the hands of the mighty Shredder, aka Arakusaki. Now, our very literal Brainiac aligned himself with Shredder, who permanently shifted into the Technodrome along with his army of robot foot soldiers. Krang struck a deal with the Shredder, pleading for a new body in exchange for his advanced technology and assistance in conquering the world. Although it took some convincing, as Shredder feared being upstaged by his cunning ally, eventually he caved when he realized that he was incapable of defeating the Ninja Turtles all by himself. In the Shredder and Splintered episode, Krang's android body, crafted from his own blueprints, was finally complete. With the triumphant return of Krang to his megalomaniac persona, he then started dreaming of bringing an army of rock soldiers to Earth and ruling beside or maybe even without Shredder. While Krang rarely engaged in one-on-one -on -one combat directly with the Turtles, he masterminded the Foot Clan's plots to conquer the Earth for a whopping seven years. For him, the Turtles and Splinter were merely disposable annoyances in case of any inconvenience, unlike the Shredder, who viewed them as mortal enemies. Unfortunately for Krang, Shredder's impulsiveness, pride, and obsession often derailed his well-thought-out plans. After completing seven seasons inside Technodrome, trying to power up his fortress in order to take over Earth, his fortified abode was banished back to Dimension X without him or Shredder. Krang's damaged android body forced him to rely on a wobbly bubble walker while on Earth and he carried out his operations out of a dusty science lab. He did eventually find his way back to operating from his fortress, but only to have it completely demolished by the turtles. With the Technodrome consumed by a vast pit, its inhabitants were forsaken, and Krang's android body was also gone along with the fortress. However, Krang and Shredder Shredder spent two years wandering Dimension X, trying to regain their powers until they were transported back to Earth with the help of Lord Dreg and his transporter. Dreg hoped that Shredder and Krang would help him in erasing the turtles for good until all of them betrayed each other, leading Dreg to drain Krang's intellect until Shredder came to his rescue, followed by the turtles who whooped them back to Dimension X. Later, the turtles returned to the Technodrome to retrieve Krang's android body, which they needed to fight against Dreg. While Krang was nowhere to be found, it was assumed that he was still lurking somewhere in Dimension X, plotting his next move. 
Krang also featured in 2012 TMNT TV series, where it was revealed that he and Krang subprime were actually cousins added a humorous twist to their relationship. As the story unfolded, it became clear that Krang's past actions had resulted in him being banished to Earth from the 1987 TV series by his cousin, Subprime, who considered him a screw-up. Seeking redemption, Krang devised a plan to use three dimensionizers in an audacious attempt to destroy not only the 1987 reality, but also the 2012 and Prime realities. His misguided goal was to prove himself by eliminating these dimensions that the Krang had been trying to mutate for thousands of years. However, his scheme was foiled by the combined efforts of the 1987 and 2012 Turtles, who quickly realized the gravity of the situation. When confronted by Krang Subprime, who was understandably furious about Krang's actions, the banished cousin tried to justify his destructive plan by removing reminding Subprime of the directive to erase the turtles at any given cost. However, this only further emphasized Krang's incompetence, leading Subprime to remind him that it was precisely this kind of foolishness that resulted in his banishment to the 1987 reality in the first place. Unable to tolerate Krang's idiocy any longer, Krang Subprime gave him a well-deserved thrashing and promptly banished him back to the 1987 reality where he belonged. As for the Krang in the 2012 series, they were also multi-tentacled brain creatures from another dimension who arrived on Earth thousands of years ago with the intention of colonizing it. However, they soon discovered that the Earth's biosphere was inhospitable to them. In their efforts to make the planet more suitable for their kind, they plotted to transform the Earth's environment while eradicating all human life. Krang brought the mutagen ooze from their dimension, but they encountered difficulties as its properties did not behave as expected due to the differences in physical laws between dimensions. To overcome this obstacle, they resorted to kidnapping scientists to help them modify the mutagen ooze according to their needs. It was revealed that the Krang were originally responsible for the mutation of Splinter and the Turtles. Additionally, they possessed a noxious gas that was toxic to humans and other earthly life forms. Their ultimate goal was to utilize the mutagen and the Krang-like powers of April O'Neil to mutate the entire planet. By doing so, they aimed to create an environment suitable for themselves with no regard for the preservation of other forms of life on Earth. You three runs will make a delicious can Krang make a clone of himself? In the Invasion of the Krangazoids episode of the 1987 TMNT cartoon series, we witnessed that this nasty brainiac was capable of making clones of himself. In his quest for more reliable henchmen, Krang decided to clone himself six times using an advanced technology, fueled cloning machine, and called them the Krangazoids. Each of his clones had a unique personality of their own and refused to follow his commands until Krang took charge of their bubble walkers and compelled them to do his bidding. The motivation behind Krang's decision to clone himself lay in his dissatisfaction with the help he had received so far. He was frustrated with Bebop and Rocksteady's incompetence in obtaining the necessary parts for his thermal generator, and believed that by creating clones of himself, he could ensure that his plans were executed more effectively and with greater control. The Krangazoids were actually pretty dangerous, as they even managed to drive the Ninja Turtles back to the Channel 6 building. But as the plot progressed, these clones started to grow hands and exhibited unexpected behaviors. They became increasingly independent and began to grow reptilian bodies, thus shedding their need for bubble walkers. Realizing their newfound freedom and power, Power, the Krangazoids turned against Krang and his original plan. But they decided to keep the thermo generator for themselves, aiming to alter Earth's climate to resemble their native Dimension X environment. The Krangazoids aimed for dominating Earth and ruling it according to their own will. However, their reign of terror ended when their unity quickly crumbled as they started bickering amongst themselves over who should be the absolute ruler of Earth. This infighting weakened their position and provided an opportunity for the Ninja Turtles to confront them, who easily defeated the Krangazoids and teleported them to the Technodrome where they were presumably contained or trapped.
Is Krang's body immune to mutagen? In some versions of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Krang was shown to be related to the diabolical Krang Prime, who arrived on Earth eons ago and mutated primates into human beings. According to this backstory, Krang Prime performed many experiments using mutagen, going as far to combine human DNA with Krang DNA to concoct a superior race. April O'Neil's mother was a recipient of this experiment and as a result turned into a human Krang hybrid while she was pregnant with April. Throughout the series, we witnessed that April was immune to the mutagen that caused mutations in other characters, which of course could not be a trait she picked from her human half. This immunity to mutagen is also attributed to Krang, as he shares genetic similarities with Krang Prime, which means that mutagen does not have any transformative effects on him. Because if it did, he surely would not be stuck as a weird brain with an android body cover and would probably mutate himself to something more bodacious instead. How does his android body work? Does Krang have technopathy powers? As we have previously established, Krang's android body was especially created by Shredder in the 1987 TV series, and it served as a mechanical exosuit that housed Krang within a compartment in its torso. He devised it to be multifunctional and equipped with a key component known as the Molecular Amplification Unit, a chip installed within the android body. This nifty little chip allowed Krang to later enlarge himself and his robotic body in size and strength in the streets of New York City while confronting the Ninja Turtles. Krang delegated his body by accessing a control panel with his tentacles. It is commonly believed that he had complete control over the android's movements and interactions with the world, with his brain being its sole controller. Logically, it does make sense that an android body designed with a compartment for a disembodied brain would be entirely reliant on that brain for all functions. If that were not enough, Krang's body is also armed with multiple weaponized arms that can be interchanged to adapt to different combat situations. These arms are not just capable of delivering powerful strikes, but can also transform into wings, enabling the android to fly in Earth's atmosphere. In many other versions of the cartoon, Krang's body is seen to be equipped with firepower, shooting laser rays from its goggles. But it is confirmed that his robotic body is fueled by the molecular amplification unit because when the Turtles devised a plan to destroy his android body in the Shredder and Splinter episode, they located the chip using Blimp to go inside the body and smashed it, causing the android and Krang to shrink back to their normal size, neutralizing it for good. In the final appearance of Krang's android body in the Divide and Conquer episode, Donatello and Michelangelo ventured to the Technodrome on Bellerophon to recover cover the android with the sole intention to use it as a weapon against Dreg. They successfully brought the android body back to Earth and used it to pin down Dreg, effectively neutralizing him. However, as the battle reached its climax, the android was thrown through a portal, exploding, resulting in Dreg's demise and the body's complete demolition. In the 2012 version of TMNT, in a surprising turn of events, the android body suddenly gained the ability to speak on its own, which raised really important questions for fans. If the body had always possessed this ability, why did it never speak before? And more significantly, was this feature controlled by Krang? Or was it the android's independent feat? Another bizarre version of TMNT in the Archie Comics edition saw Krang attaching his own brain-like body to the heads of unconscious individuals in order to have complete control over their actions. He even attached himself to Shredder's body after he was knocked out black by Krang's brand new ally. Even in the season finale of 1987 TMNT cartoon, Krang hypnotized Lord Drake's soldiers into obeying his commands, and even mentioned that his psychic abilities only worked on extremely weak-willed individuals. Now, this unique psychic power is called technopathy, and it additionally allows Krang to control and manipulate electronic and digital devices with his mind. In the case of his android body, Krang utilizes his technopathy to manipulate it, essentially turning it into a gigantic extension of himself. Through mental interfacing, Krang can perceive the environment through the android sensors, speak through its mouth, and exert control over its movements as if they were his own. This technopathy extends to other forms of technology as well, particularly his primary base of operation, the Technodrome. By mentally linking himself with the Technodrome systems, Krang gains full command over its weapons, defenses, and various other functions. Honestly, the breadth of Krang's technopathy is remarkably distinctive, given the complexity of the devices he manipulates, and it successfully compensates for his 
physically vulnerable form. Can he drain the Ninja Turtles of their mystic powers? Prior to the arrival of Krang, the Ninja Turtles utilized their mystical abilities to unleash powerful attacks, causing destruction and battling their enemies with ease. They were capable of bashing vehicles, engaging in physical combat, and tearing up the surroundings. Additionally, in a future world, one of the turtles expended so much mystical energy that he dematerialized into a cloud of matter. However, once Krang appeared in the present day, he possessed the means to drain the turtles' mystical powers to neutralize them with his supersonic scream. As a result, the battles became more aggressive, physical, and mano a mano. The turtles, along with Splinter and April, endured severe beatings, being thrown and absolutely absolutely battered by Krang. Aircraft and vehicles were blasted and swatted aside, leading to explosions and destruction. People were sent flying in air, and some underwent monstrous transformations, turning into ghastly creatures with tentacles and oversized eyes. In the midst of all the chaos, Casey recalled a childhood story about how Krang ripped open the sky and unleashed terror upon New York City. This foreshadowed the devastation and transformation of the city into a burning, dystopian land landscape, similar to what was glimpsed in the future. Although Krang seemed to be virtually indestructible, April managed to steal chemicals that would have a corrosive effect on him, similar to acid burns. Additionally, one of the Krang members was impaled by a steel beam from a collapsing building. The turtles ultimately confronted and defeated Krang 3, who manned the Technodrome's main hub. Donatello and Michelangelo sealed Krang 3 right into its walls. However, Leonardo struggled against Raphael, who was under the influence of Krang's mind control and allowed Krang 1 to escape and kidnap Donnie and Mikey. In a pivotal moment, when Leo appealed to Raphael's emotions, he finally broke free from the mind control. As the turtles fought back against Krang 1's tentacles, their magical powers were restored. Simultaneously, Team April used a construction crane to pin down Krang 2, allowing Casey to dislodge the key for good. As the portal closed, the Technodrome got pulled back into the prison dimension and Leo sacrificed himself to save his brothers who were thrown out of the ship. Is Krang capable of taking control over living beings? With an IQ of 968, Krang is probably the most intelligent thing in the universe. This brain-like entity's technopathic abilities allow him to exert full control over mutants, humans, and other living beings alike with ease. Not just that, Krang can also transform them into hideous and grotesque zombies. In some iterations, the Krang's process of organic assimilation is deeply unsettling and gruesome. With their meat Moss a fleshy growth, starting to envelop and consume the victims. It penetrates beneath the surface of their bodies, causing a transformation into a more alien-like biology, leading to the emergence of multiple alien eyes throughout their bodies. One instance of this occurs with Krang 2, who experiences a particularly unpleasant case of assimilation after April throws the stolen chemical on his face, causing an intense reaction to the Krang matter, like it was doused in supercharged hydrochloric acid. This grotesque acid burnt a hole through Krang 2's head, leaving a permanent injury and causing him to lose one of his eyes. Surprisingly, instead of debilitating him, this grievous injury only seemed to fuel Krang 2's anger and resilience. Oh, you will have to. <laughs> Is Krang immortal? While he possessed advanced technology and had displayed longevity, Krang was not exactly impervious to death. In the seventh issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Armageddon Game, this iconic villain finally met his demise. In this story arc, Krang decided to abandon his plans of commanding the Utroms to take over Earth and instead choose to use the Technodrome to completely obliterate the world and escape through an interdimensional portal. However, the Ninja Turtles and their neutrino allies were fully prepared for Krang's attack and launched a fatal counter-strike against him. During the confrontation, King Zenter, the leader of the neutrinos, accused Krang of war crimes spanning across multiple universes, thus declaring the brain dude guilty and sentencing him to death. Without hesitation, Zenter shot Krang right between his eyes, delivering a fatal blow. The mech suit that Krang was wearing, which was actually a metalhead, confirmed that Krang's life functions were at zero, assuring 
following his demise and a swift but definitive end to his reign of megalomaniacal tyranny. While that might not have been the first time fans thought Krang was dead, the instance appeared to be the one that really stuck. In previous comic book events, Krang was seemingly killed but somehow always managed to return. However, the significance of this particular moment was emphasized by the fact that it marked a new beginning for the TMNT series, with the departure of this classic antagonist, General Krang. Krang's death really was the end of an era in the TNMT series. To think this oozing brain survived 36 years in the franchise. Knowledge really is power, huh? His goofiness and colorful personality really cut through his antagonist character, making him one of the most infamous villains in TMNT. So, that covers pretty much everything about this pink brain-like entity's anatomy, who functions straight out of a robot's stomach. With this, we come to the very end of this video. If you are a TMNT enthusiast at heart, do not forget to tell us in the comments about which version of Krang is your favorite. Taking you back! Oh no! You're not